course, it's his fault. <laughs> Well, Tracy Austin alongside has become inside Arthur Ashe Stadium now where Lindsay Davenport, on the bottom of your screen, receiving serve from Mali, China. A very talented player, ranked now number 40 in the world. So a tough first round match. With 32 seats, it's about as tough as matches Lindsay could draw in the first round. Yeah, with a couple of top players pulling out. Rovina didn't play. Actually, Na Lee got off to a two-love start here. Lindsay Davenport in the second game on her first service game. She served two double faults in a row. Came out a little shaky. There's been two service breaks mm -hmm. with each player to get to this three-all score. It's very unusual to have Davenport broken, have her serve broken so often. Nali has very deep ground strokes, good penetration. The accuracy is what's been impressive. Breaks. And the edge right now to Davenport. Well, she's a, a champion here, and my goodness, Tracy Lindsay now at 29, and she's been in play to the end of every major in the last year. It's been a remarkable run for her. Really she's done everything has. but win one. Yeah, semifinals here last year. Good record this year, 42 and 7. By the way, over $20 million in career prize money. Three titles under her belt this year. The Australian Open, she was up a set against Serena Williams. Serena taking it in three. One here in 1998. That was her first Grand Slam over Kingus. Three straight semis in the last three years and uh, frustrated because of an injury crept up during her semi with his nets of a last year. After Lindsay had won the first set. And coming off a just this marvelous Wimbledon final, losing 9 7 and third to Venus. As we take a look at Leaves 23, the province of Hubei. I hope I pronounced that properly. But a new face, only the second. Grand Slam she's ever played. She won two rounds at the Australian this year before losing to Sharapova. But Tracy, it's the beginning, and we saw obviously the Russians in huge numbers take over last year, and it really started at the Olympics last year. Something we, I think we all need to get used to in the world. We're going to start seeing tennis players from China at a high level. I think it all changed when Beijing decided as the Olympic venue in 2008 and started pouring a lot more money into all the sports, including tennis. Now there's three Chinese players in the top 100. And actually, they missed Wimbledon this year because there was a tournament back home in China that was much more important to them to play in order to do well to continue to get right. that money. Peng Shui and, and Li are the top two. They're in the top 40 right now. And yeah, they both could not play Wimbledon and they were very stoic about it. That's good. Peng Shui actually had Lindsay Davenport on the ropes at the French this year. She was two points away from taking her out. Davenport had an excellent French, lost in the quarters to Mary Pierce, but uh, beat Kim Kleisters in 
Excellent win on the slow red clay. Nobody expected that, so she's had a terrific year. Full tools. Talked to Adam Peterson the other day while Lindsay was practicing and his, at, at Lindsay's coaching. He said that it slowly snares Adam on the left, sitting next to Lindsay's mom. And slowly, Lindsay's coming to realize what a special, spectacular match she was a part of. One for the ages, and even though she lost, no shame in the Wimbledon Championship. Well, there's a hold for 5-3 Davenport. And Lindsay, of course, had that match point. She also is up a set in 6-5 serve for the match. Serve for it right in the second set. Up 4-2 and 40-15 on her serve in the third when she hurt her back. And that's been bothering her for most of the summer. She said people were sending stuffed animals. They were sending <laughs> flowers. They were sending gifts. They felt so badly. But she knew she left it all on the court. Venus just raised her level. 15. Doing it at 29, and I think that's can't be considered anything but good for the sport. You don't have to be a teenager. And for someone like Jennifer Capriati, who's working so hard to come back, she had two surgeries, shoulder and wrist, hopeful of coming back next year. And she'll turn 30. It's, you, you look at Lindsay Davenport, and there's the inspiration. Yeah, Lindsay's still doing. had a couple of surgeries in the last couple of years, knee and foot with a nerve problem. by Lee, and it will be Davenport serving for the first set when we return to the U.S. Open. American Express, we're live inside Arthur Ashe Stadium with Davenport serving for the first set. That bad back. Lindsay got it in the final at Wimbledon. Followed her through most of the summer. She tried to play it in Stanford. Woke up that morning, was hurting. Went out, it was a night match, so Lindsay's such a good sport. She wanted to give it a try, knew the fans would want to see her. She played five games and was really no contest, could not compete against Gronfeld. Couldn't play until New Haven last week, won it without losing a set. Just long as we watched Lindsay Davenport regain the world number one yesterday after losing the spot for one week to Maria Sharapova. And playing the number 39 player in the world here in the first round. But Davenport prevails. That strong first serve. She takes the first set. With the unbridled joy of Venus in celebrating another win and the unmatched sportsmanship of Lindsay Davenport in watching Venus' celebration. Yeah, Venus was jumping literally four feet in the air, just up and down ten times in a row, and Lindsay was extremely gracious. It must have been so difficult for her to sit there and watch. She chases this bag, shows it's a little breezy. Somebody had, somebody had that on the string, I know. <laughs> That's the way that Lindsay has conducted herself throughout her whole career. Extremely gracious. Oh. And especially, Ted, at 29, you know, she had to be thinking, gosh, was this my last chance? Oh, what? 
the difference a year makes. I mean, last year at Wimbledon, 2004, she was talking about maybe it was her last Wimbledon. She might retire. He just missed, so now we start the second set with three break points. And IBM's tracker shows it wide. Double fault, second of the match, and that gives the game to Davenport. So let's take a look at the numbers on our Avidart match summary. Great first service percentage for Davenport. Still good for Lee. The unforced for Lee at 14. She's hanging in there pretty well with Davenport. Whole new level of Tennis, playing someone like a Davenport who hits the ball extremely hard and with great depth. Just keeps coming at you. It's tough to weather the storm off both sides. Get her beautiful ball striking. Get the timing. This is where it helps to be six foot two, six three. She's won nine of the last ten points. She, Adam Peterson made a great point highlighting what you talked about that maybe we're we're not seeing the last of Lindsay Davenport. Who knows? But, oh, nice return. Peterson's point was that. Lindsay, Lindsay's at peace with herself. She's married, she's happy, not trying to prove anything to anybody anymore. And it really rung true a lot of the same things about Andre Agassi. And that it enables them to be much better about calling their own shots. About when it's time to go. It's interesting, Lindsay's been very honest that she's actually done better than she ever thought that she would you know, on the tour. Winning three Grand Slams. Very happily married to John Leach for two and a half years now. But I think that she's still out there, Ted, because she, in the last year, now thinks that she can take sure. that Grand Slam. Before, she was saying, I've getting a lot of quarters, a lot of semis. You know, I just, she had been talking about retirement. She said, I didn't want to end my career going down in the rankings. But now she's a true contender. But it's a... It and there's no question about it. She's number one. There's no question. It's just, it's a wonderful way, I would think, to play with that total relaxation, the peace of mind of, I was like, okay, I'm out here for myself now. Exactly. I'm trying to do anything for anybody else. Don't need to prove I'm anything. Happy. Done more than I ever expected. And, and pretty much healthy, you know, until this back right. injury this summer. And that was really difficult for her. traveling for the last year with her own physio on tour. Michelle Gobrain actually lives in Australia. Michelle's been doing a lot of traveling, a lot of frequent flyer miles, I'll tell you. Back home after Wimbledon, came back to the California event in Stanford, stayed there after she got injured. That's an investment, I'll tell you what that's called. An investment. Lindsay also has her strength trainer here and her coach. Striking the ball well. And we look at our IBM ticker. Speaking of anonymous players, how about the number six seed, Nikolai Davidenko? Max Mirny's about to uh, close out Justin Gimmel's stop. They're playing on Armstrong. There's a wonderful story. Eunice Elenawi back playing. 
against Baradorn Srishaban. Well, now he's been out for quite a while with an injury and another player north of 30. Trying to come back to American ladies playing there. Joe Kravis, of course, had the win over Serena at Wimbledon. Davenport's physio. That's uh, something most of the players have now as well. And 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they started with a coach. Most of the top players now have their own traveling physio. And as I said, Lindsay, also with her strength trainer, Todd Norman. Some of the players even have their own stringers that they bring along. But they're making this much money, they feel it makes... The difference in their game is worth it. Oh, Ooh, that's a terrific response. Beautiful angle to fill the opening, comes around the outside of the ball. See her right ankle strapped. She heard a couple of weeks ago in Toronto. She had to retire in the second set. She was losing to Petrova in the third round. There by Lee. Davenport up a set and a break. Time at the open. Andy Roddick will follow Lindsay Davenport. Up a set and a break, trying to make sure she can close this one out without drama. Ted, I found it very interesting to watch these players warm up for this match. Davenport came out about 4.15 on this court mm -hmm. until about 5, and she was very precise in what she worked on, doing different patterns and different drills to the corners. Worked on high floater shots. She came out and hit those out of the air. Here. And then Davenport spent about five minutes at least on each side. It says out. But if you're going to accept an overrule, that's where you do it. That's the line closest, obviously, to the chair. It's a couple of points to this is that Davenport spent a lot of time on her return of serve, and she's one of the best returners in the game. And Na Li, when she went out to practice, she just hit up the middle, straight up the middle with Zhi Zheng, another player. I, I just don't understand that. She, you know, not hitting any angles at all, not at, it went up to the net, and hit well, straight up the middle, not to the corners. And obviously that yeah, raises a cultural question that we'll, we'll, I'm sure, find out more about in years to come, is what kind of coaching is available in China, a country where there's not much tennis played. Badminton has been a big sport, and that's the sport that she started at as a youth. But it's very similar to the Sri Japan story in Thailand, where he was taught the game by his father off videotapes. Just like Venus and Serena mm -hmm. from Richard mm -hmm. on videotapes. So there were two things that I could think of. Maybe her ankle was bothering her. She didn't want to move. But still, if you don't want to move, you stand in the corners and hit some cross-court shots, mm -hmm. hit some down-the-line shots. It was just a very uncreative practice. 
and Davenport switching sides to get used to the wind. And it's starting to kick up just a little bit tonight. The uh, aftermath of Katrina is scheduled to come through tomorrow. We're not sure exactly how much will hit New York, but everyone's sort of on alert for some possible weather. Saw Lindsay practicing some drop shots just like this in her warm up. This one too deep and too high, still above the net. Nolly strikes the ball for a winner. It's... Must win game here to stay in this match at all. Looking at uh, Lee's record, match record this year, there's one thing that jumps off the page at me. She played a tournament in Morocco over the summer. She beat the number 443rd ranked player in the world in the second round, Yelena Dokic. 443. You gotta hand it to her though. She's trying to make a comeback now. So many personal problems, family issues. Once it was as high as, I think it was four in the world. Went back to live in Serbia. Had moved with her family, young age, to Australia. And her first ace. He's able to hold, still a set to break in hand for Davenport. Davenport serve goes to her. <laughs> Tracy, would you imagine Lindsay was not terribly upset when she saw the draw? I think she was okay with the draw. I was going to say, not, not a lot of... Uh, Huge early obstacles. Inhale Medina Garrigas, first seed, 32. She's actually a good player, though. And uh, in Lindsay's quarter of the draw, the top seeds are Dementiva and Schneider. So I think that when it all came down, she she could not have been unhappy. No, Natalie does she? Would be around a 16, someone that she beat in the semis in Australian this year. Oof. And I'm sure she's just really happy that she's out here and playing this well. I'm sure for a while this summer, she had doubts of whether she was going to make it. Steps into this forehand. Of course, going into New Haven, not playing all summer. Just last week, she was very rusty. Wasn't sure how her back would hold up. Oh. Wow. That scored game for Davenport and Lee. Really upset. Here, 
Snyder did jank it in the chair. Let's see. Uh, the IBM tracker shows the ball. I say I, I don't try to do this too often, but that was out. I mean, that you was can see it. Out. You can see it from here. Pretty clearly out. You can see the trajectory of the ball. I'm not. Uh, my eyes aren't nearly as good as John's, who's had that great track record. But that ball was out. So. We mentioned this a little bit yesterday. We remind you all that there the, the was a, a sincere effort was made to install electronic line calling for this U.S. Open. The USTA led the charge, but the other bodies, WTA, ATP, ITF, were all involved. And they came close, but the, they just could not get a system that they felt was going to be consistently reliable. And so it's been shelved, at least for a year. I bet they'll come up with it in the next couple of years. They also have to figure out how the system's going to work. Do the players have the number of challenges per set? And I thought that was the most interesting thing we heard from the USTA, which sent one of its top executives, Jim Curley, went to Roland Garros this year to canvas all the top players, male and female, about their views. And most of them's number one concern was the use of the system, the gamesmanship. Want it, yeah, they didn't want it abused. <laughs> they did not want a situation where a player could challenge every single call. That there likely would be something like football employed. Yeah, it stopped the rhythm of the match. Lindsay has been known to talk to herself a little bit during the match, hasn't she? <laughs> Hopefully young kids couldn't read the lips mm -hmm. there. Oh. Oh, another hold for Lee. Lindsay Davenport, two games from advancing. Serena Williams in the third round of Wimbledon. These two on court 10. Now in the grandstand, where this is only the fourth match of the day, at 8.30 at night, Mary Pierce in her first round match against Mara Santangelo of Italy. And back inside, Ash. Finished on Armstrong, where Max Mirny took out Justin Kimmelstab in straight sets in their first round match. And Robbie Ginepri is going to take the court at Armstrong. He's been moved over there in his first round match. Possibility of Ginepri and Roddick again in the second round. Well, our second round women's action starts tomorrow. Tomorrow night, Serena Williams will take the court here under the lights in her second round match. And then we'll have a second round men's match, Rafael Nadal against Scoville Jenkins. Scoville gets a second chance under the lights. Young man who debuted here last year against Andy Roddick. He hasn't gotten some very good draws. Saw so Scoville's father tonight. He said that same thing. He said, you know, Scoville got number one last year. He gets number two this year. <laughs> Just have to work on getting seated. And it takes a little longer to get to those seats. Of course, Grand Slam's seeding 32 now as of, what, about four or five years ago? About four. Some good angles. Nali whips around that backhand beautifully.
Lindsay looks, Trish looks to be moving just fine, doesn't she? And I talked to Adam Peterson and she said she's feeling 100%. There's Adam on the left. He's been her coach for a couple of years. Her mom, Ann, comes to most of the majors. after her first match in New Haven she didn't know how she would feel the next day she felt great and she actually played three days in a row at the end of the tournament so that's a good sign she's having a little struggle here trying to close out this game off balance for that shot rare to see especially one hit right to her In this set, Lindsay's won every point when she's put her first serve in. And only 42% on second serves. Yep. That percentage goes up and now 5-3 in the second set. So tomorrow night, we're back at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific Live with Primetime at the Open, presented by American Express. It will be Serena Williams first against Catalina Castano of Colombia. And then Rafael Nadal's first night match in New York City against Scoville Jenkins from Atlanta. Nadal is so much fun to watch. So much charisma. So involved, what a passion. But that's a tennis baptism. First time you play with the lights. At the U.S. Open. The U.S. Open. That's what sets this Grand Slam apart. Big. Energy in the night matches. Biggest stadium you'll see. New York fans, not afraid to get involved. Second ace. 23 years old. She's been on the tour number of years, about five years, six years now. Uh, as Tracy mentioned, one of three Chinese players that have uh, broken into the top 100 and even above this year. And then there was a fourth Chinese woman who qualified, Tian Tian Sun. So four players from China in the main draw, 128. Soon, part of the winning pair, one of the Olympics last year. We saw the young lady from Taipei, Chinese Taipei, played Serena Williams yesterday. But need we tell you how international this sport has become? All we need to say is Madagascar, Dali, Randri, and Teffy. They share a pole second round. Randy and Teffy. Oh, nice. 
finish there by Lee. Picked up the pace. Increased the angle in that last backhand. Racket head speed. Sometimes, in my opinion, she takes it back a little late. That one's striking it perfectly. So, Lee does hold, and Davenport will have to serve out the match. Now, Lindsay Davenport serving for the match and continuing her streak. A first serve in wins the point. 13 of 13 in this second set on first serves. And 14 now. <laughs> they get to keep that ball. That's right. Oh, they threw it back. Save he it. forgot. And the fans are blowing. Oh, and they threw it back to him. I love That's that. That's good. A new change instituted here on Ash Stadium Court this year. Ball hit into the crowd, can be kept. And the chair empire has a supply of used, slightly used balls that uh, can replace anyone that's lost. Trying to get a ball that's very similar and has the same amount of wear and tear. It's the five balls that would then be out there. By the way, I need to amend one statement I made, how quickly we forget. Rafael Nadal will play here tomorrow night. He played under the lights last year, second round against Andy Roddick. And Roddick beat him love three and four. How things have changed in a year, huh? Incredible. I remember watching that match and couldn't believe in that first set they were hitting the ball so extremely hard. I don't know how Roddick won at six love. Strong serving Knight gives herself two match points. low the ball is actually actually was right about waist level she was on the full stretch Six doubles. She sure does not serve that many doubles because she has good spin. High over that net and bring it back down. The ball right down the middle comes the response. One of the best serves in the women's game, along with Serena Williams. Her accuracy. So close to the corners. Right at the body there. Oh, 
third match point in this game. And there, Lindsay puts it away, and how she did it, three straight first serves. So the number one in the world, number two seed, threw a tough first round. Four and four. Hour and 11 minutes. And Lena. Only her second and Grand Slam. I think she put on a good show. The funny thing is, Lindsay's, yeah, Lindsay's next opponent won't be anywhere near as highly ranked as the player she just beat. That gives you an idea again of that draw that put a very good player, number 39 in the world, against Davenport in the first round. All right, let's hear from Lindsay as we go down to Michael Barkin. All right, Teddy, thank you very much. Lindsay, uh, she made you work for it at the end, didn't she? Yeah, she played really well at the end. Um, it was a good first match to get under my belt, and I'm always happy when I can get off to a winning start, but she's a very good player. It was a lot of tough points. A little bit windy down here, um, but yeah, it got close at the end. What's it like preparing for an opponent you've never met before? Well, <laughs> you try and hear about them as much as you can, and at a certain point, it's about worrying about your own game and what you need to do well to move forward. And um, I just hope I can get better as the tournament goes on. I'm really happy to be back here, and um, hopefully I can go a little farther this year. You took some time off this summer. You played, what, five matches, four in one of those matches. You won the pilot pen. Do you think that's going to be a benefit for you? Hope so. I didn't have uh, many other options this summer. Uh, my back injury was worse than I thought it was going to be, so I was out a little bit longer. But happy I was able to come back in time for here. I'm happy I won last week, and I uh, just hope to stay healthy. You've had good looks at winning the last five Grand Slams. You're in two Grand Slam finals. What's been the missing ingredient that you think you can put together? You know, it's just that last match. <laughs> Keep giving myself good chances, and that's really all I can ask for. And hopefully it'll go my way one of these days. And uh, just keep trying until that happens. Thanks, Lindsay. Congratulations. Thanks. Lindsay Davenport. Another new tradition. The winning player signs three balls and hits them up into the stands. Fans love it. because they, players get it. They're hitting them. Every player in is making sure they get them upstairs. <laughs> they get it. And the Smart play. The aren't quite as good. So Lindsay Davenport is through, but stay with us. We still have Andy Roddick to come as well. We'll be keeping you up on some of the matches going on.